There is hardly any black wealth here in the UK and one of the proposed reasons is that a lot of black people here, whether they be Africans or from the Caribbean, are actually sending quite a lot of money overseas back home to help family and to invest and to build a life back there. So in today's video, I wanna dig a little bit into this point and I wanna ask a question whether the so-called black tax is holding black people in the diaspora, particularly in the UK, back. Thank you for watching in advance. Make sure you subscribe, like, and I look forward to your comments on this and let's get into this. I, I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing to have that cultural obligation, that feeling of obligation and requirement for us to be supporting our family. Yes, that's a brilliant thing. That is one of the key ingredients for co cooperative wealth and progress and development. You need that. I know from personal experience, not my own personal experience to be honest, but my parents and other older relatives, elder relatives who came here and they had children abroad or nieces and nephews abroad, they are sending a very significant amount of money back home every month, in some cases every week. You know, I know I've got a lot of friends who you know talk about having to send back, you know, in some cases hundreds and hundreds of pounds a month which can make up a significant chunk of their salary every month and there are many concerns about this this has been termed the black tax and it's called the black tax because it's seen as this obligation that you can't actually opt out of it's an obligation that you have to send money back home to support family friends and so forth a lot of, in a lot of the cases this money is being sent back to pay for school fees but it's also paying for emergencies it's paying for for health cover health costs it's being sent to you know all, all various different reasons. I, I had a little bit of this a few years back, not so much these days, but I had a lot of, you know, some of this where certain cousins of mine overseas would be asking me to send money to for this reason, for that reason, they want to start a business, they want to do that, this, that, and the other. One of my main concerns, to be honest, with, with this dynamic is that I get the impression that money is just being sent back kind of aimlessly. I don't really get a sense in my own experience or even talking to my friends who are doing this much more regularly themselves. I don't really get a sense that there's any plan. I don't really get the idea that there's some kind of vision like okay I'm here in the UK and I'm you know I'm sending money back the pu overall purpose for sending this money back is so that in X amount of years this will be the situation there's this venture there's this business that's being created for the family or there's this you know we're, we're going to work we're buying this land we're going to work this land to turn this land into something that can become an income generator or build wealth over there I don't really hear that sort of stuff it to me it just sounds like a pure charity thing it's pure it's like an ATM oh I just need cash I'll just go and ask uh, such and such in in England for, for cash or I'll go and ask such and such in America for cash. For me, it's like a dependency thing that is just being entrenched, if that makes sense. It's like, okay, this person's just there and I'm always going to be able to go to them for cash. But what's going to happen when that person overseas is unable to work? What's going to happen when that person overseas loses their job, is unable to find work anymore or is, you know, too sick to work or whatever it might be? Then all of those people who've been relying on them, depending on them, are going to be screwed. This is one of my biggest problems actually with us as black people overall, regardless regardless of where we come from in the world, I just feel like we do a lot of things on autopilot without a real consideration of the future, a real consideration or a vision of the future to work towards. Okay, cool, we're working toward these things. It feels too much of the time to me that we're just on autopilot, just living for living's sake. We're not talking to each other about our plans for the future. We're not in particular teaching our children about our plans for the future, bringing them into our plans and our vision for the future. Do we even have a vision for the future? I don't get I don't get a sense of that too much. And so for me, the black tax kind of just fits into this overall overarching problem that we have that we just don't seem to be particularly focused on the future. And we're just focused on just getting through day by day, just getting through, getting through, getting through. And actually this connects to a slightly related issue, which is that a lot of the time people, some of our elders are sending money back to build property. They're building a house, they're building a, uh, in the comments, people have talked about how people are, you know, elders are building these massive mansions in Ghana or Nigeria or Uganda and Zimbabwe and whatever it might be, talking about how they're going to eventually go back there and live there and whatnot. But what I see happening quite often is that these people never actually get to go back because they're just working, 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 stressing themselves out, supporting family, sending money back to build this house, which eventually other family members move into rent-free and just enjoy themselves in this house. And then either they just die here in this country and they never get to move back or what sometimes happens like anecdotally these people go they retire they go and retire back home in Ghana for example and then within a few years time they've died. They didn't get to enjoy that. 
But by far my biggest problem with the so-called black tax dynamic is that we are neglecting our own lives here in the UK, in the diaspora, in the US or wherever it might be, Europe. And this wouldn't be so bad if it was just our own lives that we're just putting on hold. But it's our children, actually. We're neglecting our children. And it's leading to some very, very unfortunate social outcomes for us and for our children. I've covered a lot of these in, in recent videos. You can check out my, my, my video, Just check out the links below to, to watch some of these videos to go into more detail. And I don't see enough of a focus. I don't see enough of an urgency amongst our people to be looking to address the issues that we have here. My overall point with regard to the black tax is that we as black African people here, I think we need to have a lot more tough, honest conversations with one another. We need to be thinking much more critically about things. We need to be holding each other to account. We need to be holding ourselves to account as parents here in the UK. We need to be holding ourselves to account, even if you're, you know, you're a man and you've left your children or whatever. No, your parents, our, as parents and nephew and brothers and sisters and so forth, we need to be holding each other account saying, no, listen, okay, fine, the relationship's broken down. It happens. But you need to be involved in your children's lives. Similarly, we need to be holding one another account across, you know, our families back home to account. We need to be saying, listen, what's your plan? You keep coming and asking for money for this, that and the other. What's your plan to actually get to a position where you can start to support yourself? Childbearing is one of those factors. I just cannot understand it and I do not think it's right that someone in you know, back home can just be having three, four, five children and they're just basically coming to depend on their brother or their sister or their parent or whatever it might be. Even their child over in the UK or in the US, they're depending on them to pay for their own children's school fees. So well, why did you have those children in the first place? There needs to be more of, a, of an actual dynamic of family accountability and responsibility, if that makes sense. So that's, that's my overall thoughts anyway with regard to the black tax. I think it's a good thing, as I said, that we are supporting our families. You know, many of us are supporting our families overseas. But I think it's a bad thing and it's, it's we've got to stop neglecting our own situations here. We've got to stop neglecting our children in particular here. If you're working so hard, working so hard, your fingers to the bone, a lot of our, unfortunately, a lot of our, our brothers and sisters are working very low paying jobs in the care work sector, you know, the healthcare sector, transport, and, you know, these very low, level lower salary paying jobs so they're having to work many many hours and they're working all of these hours partly because they're having to send a lot of money overseas to help their families overseas this can't be this it's not sustainable you're going to burn out if you're doing that you're going to burn out and it's going to come to a point where you are unable to help anybody a sick you is of no use to your family overseas. So in my opinion, I think it's really important for those of you who are sending significant sums of money back home, I think you need to start getting into a habit of learning how to say no, learning how to set some boundaries in place. There are some brilliant videos on YouTube here from oddly, mainly from people from South Africa and Zimbabwe, it seems to be, who are talking about this black tax here in the diaspora. And there's some really good bits of advice there about how to bring up some of these conversations and how to be bold enough and strong enough to start to say, actually, on this occasion, no, I can't, you know? All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. It's a different kind of video, but I hope you've kind of got, you know, a flavor of what I'm kind of getting at. And I, I would really like to hear your thoughts actually on this. Are you giving, are you sending money back home? And if so, do you think that actually you could maybe do something more as a family to make sure that it's more effective? Do you, have you stopped? I'd be really interested to hear if there's anyone who's decided just to just stop doing it. How did you do it? How did the family react and all that sort of stuff? Really be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Other than that, take good care again. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Like and share the video. There are videos on my channel that you, I'm sure you will really enjoy watching. This one's here that YouTube will suggest, hopefully. Then there's another one here, which I think dovetails very nicely with the topic of this particular video. Take good care of yourself and I will speak to you next time.